Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. It's been pretty hard for me to get into any new movies in the last year, and that's partly because what's happening in real life is far more interesting and a lot more terrifying than anything Hollywood could ever make up. But don't fret, we're still not in the clear yet before all of this is over. We're either going to see a mutation that turns people into zombies, that or aliens are going to arrive. Or maybe it's going to be zombie aliens, which is why today we're going to be taking a look at five of the worst zombie apocalypse scenarios you could possibly find yourself in. Zombies used to be a lot less scary back in the day. It used to be the reanimated dead just sort of lumbered along like tortured souls being puppeted by Satan himself. These were slow, dumb, and blind beasts that you could avoid with a brisk yog. Now, I don't have any children, but if I had a son and he came up to me and asked me, Pa, when did the zombies start running? Well, I could pinpoint the exact moment and the exact film. 19 years ago, the film 28 Days Later came out, and zombies haven't stopped running since then. You see, what made the zombies different in this movie was the rage virus. At its core was a specific inhibitor designed to isolate and suppress neurochemicals in our brain that cause anger. Researchers wanted to use this inhibitor to decrease aggression in humans. What they needed was a vehicle for this inhibitor, and for some reason they chose a contagion known as the Ebola virus. And so this inhibitor was eventually injected into a chimpanzee, and of course the virus mutated and then turned into the loving rage virus we all fear and tremble in front of. Add in some crazy animal activists just trying to do the right thing, and the pixies, and you have a film that changed the zombie genre and turned it from just creepy to incredibly terrifying. Now, the scariest part of the rage virus is that it's basically pumping a human being's body full of adrenaline and other hormones, which makes them basically unstoppable. This means that these zombies aren't just running, they're basically sprinting at full speed at all times, which means no matter how good of an endurance runner you are or how fast of a sprinter you are, either way, you're probably gonna be screwed. The only weakness these zombies have is that their body does burn a lot of energy when they're doing this, so you know eventually that metabolism is going to make them starve. As a 13-year-old, I was probably too young to be watching this film. I remembered the stench of fear and constant feeling of depression and gloom this movie gave me, although that could also be a side effect of the London setting in the movie with its constant overcast gray skies. Every movie that followed it, whether it was the crazy body waves of World War Z or the Korean zombie passengers on the train to Busan, were all preceded by this one very iconic film. What made Land of the Dead such a terrifying film wasn't the physical attributes or strengths of the zombies. For the most part, these were walkers, like the classic zombies pre-28 Days Later. The humans in this film, for the most part, treated them like dumb herd animals and messed around with them and killed them in all sorts of creative and gruesome ways. But for one reason or another, a zombie known as Big Daddy became pretty aware of what was going on. When the humans started using fireworks to distract the zombies, Big Daddy tried to wake up all of his zombie buddies up so they didn't get slaughtered by the humans when they came to town. Throughout the entire film, as humans kill more and more zombies, Big Daddy becomes more and more upset. He feels helpless in the face of all of the senseless slaughtering of his people. This is terrifying. A zombie that can feel emotions and remorse is just one step away from being smart enough to say walk across the bottom of a river to get around the puny human's defenses. Big Daddy is also smart enough to pick up a gun and fire it. How many zombies have you seen do that? To make matters worse, Big Daddy begins leading his fellow zombies on a mission to wipe out the human threat once and for all, aka they get organized. And soon we begin to see other zombies regain some of their own sentience as well. A single zombie is easy to get around and exploit, but when a bunch of zombies decide to come together and get organized, well, humanity doesn't seem to stand much of a chance. Sure, this might not be known as George Romero's best zombie film, but it definitely features some of the worst zombies you could possibly face. This technically isn't a zombie apocalypse. This also isn't an episode of WandaVision. The film Legion is a story of biblical proportions, and instead of having the undead arise because of some virus, something far worse has happened. God has lost all faith in humanity, and now his angels are coming to destroy us. 
What makes the situation so horrific is whether you do believe in God, specifically, I guess, the Abrahamic version in this case. Actually seeing the manifestation of its will on Earth would probably be terrifying, especially when the lower angels begin possessing human beings in mass, which turn them into black peopled monsters with sharpened teeth, increased speed, and durability. There are just hordes of these monsters everywhere, and humanity is hanging by a thread. It's terrifying for religious folks, and it's probably just as terrifying for atheists like Bob, who happens to own the diner in which humanity's final showdown against the divine will occur. The most terrifying part of this film for me is the fact that this horde of possessed humans uh, cannot be explained by some virus or, you know, knowledge of the human body. It can only be explained by essentially unseen magical holy forces. The only thing I guess you could do is grab a gun and pray. There have been a lot of awesome zombie flicks coming out of South Korea in the last 10 years, so I thought I'd mention one of my favorite zombie movies on this list. I wanted to use Kingdom as an example of one of the hardest zombie apocalypses to survive. I mean, food is already scarce enough in feudal Korea, and your weapons options are limited. But then again, I realized bladed weapons and bow and arrows are pretty stealthy and good in a zombie apocalypse. And feudal Korea's population was significantly lower than what it is today, and that should matter a lot as well. And that's because any kind of contagion usually spreads faster when you have dense population centers. And while South Korea today is only the 23rd most densely populated country in the world, about 19 of those countries ahead of South Korea are more like city-states like Hong Kong, Singapore, and the Vatican, or small islands like the Maldives and Bermuda. If we remove all of these city-states and small islands, South Korea only sits behind Bangladesh, Lebanon, and Taiwan in density. South Korea has an overall population density of 1,326 people per square mile and around 16,000 people per square mile in much more packed areas like Seoul. Just based on its population density, South Korea probably is one of the worst places to be during a zombie apocalypse. To make matters worse, South Korea is isolated on a peninsula and its northern boundary, which crosses over to more sparsely populated areas, happens to be in one of the most heavily mined places in the world, the Korean DMZ. And just because South Korea has fallen to the zombie apocalypse, doesn't mean that North Koreans won't have a million soldiers at their border ready to turn away any of us zombie capitalist pigs. In the World War Z novel, the North Korean leader basically removes everyone's teeth in his country so that they can bite each other. It's terrifying and also very smart. And so if you think about it, the train to Busan combined with those 20 days later style fan zombies is probably one of the worst situations you could find yourself in. Also, me and American Ben actually watched Train to Busan on the Train to Busan, and I gotta say, the doors in between the cars are ridiculously thin. When the Reapers came out of hiding and started raising the entire Milky Way, one of the most terrifying parts of their offensive were these beings known as husks. These were synthetic organic zombies, and they were created when an organic being was placed on a gigantic impaling device. Using what I'm guessing is alien nanotech, the person's skin and internal organs will then be replaced by non-organic materials, and their blood will change to a greenish color. These husks were used by the Reaper ground forces, which was mainly made up of other organic beings that were turned into like these cybernetic monsters. The husks generally came in the first wave of an attack and they were primarily melee fighters. They usually advanced on a position in giant swarms and when they got close enough, they would discharge a large amount of electricity, which caused a ton of damage and took down personal shields. This was basically the Reaper's MO. Not only were their ships massive and far more advanced than anything the inhabitants of the Milky Way had, the Reapers also turned their fallen enemies into cannon fodder, which they threw right back at their enemy. This was not only a very effective strategy, but also greatly demoralized the opposing forces. So there you have it, guys. Those are five zombie apocalypses that are incredibly hard to survive in. Let me know in the comment section below what your five are. I'm sure they're pretty different from mine. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.